Hi, Craig. Hey, Matt. Welcome to our first episode of Welcome to the Basement. Yes. As you know, I've got a bunch of movies that I haven't seen before. Maybe you have. I don't know, because you don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. We're going to watch it, and then we're going to discuss it. You excited? Yes, I am. I've been looking forward to this all week. Let's get started. Before we do, uh, I have another gift for you. All right. There you go. Okay. That's, that's for you. Gift. <laughs> Hey, it's 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 a it's a hat. Let's try it out. All right. So yeah, it looks good. You look like Vincent Gallo. Vincent Gallo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's an onion, I suppose so. It's January. Oh, the chill winds of winter are blowing at our windows and at our souls. What better way to celebrate this bitter mistress than with a film that perfectly illustrates the struggle between man and cold, unyielding nature? I'm talking about none other than the 1922 classic Nanook of the North. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The movie subtitled A Story of Life and Love in the Actual Arctic. Nanook of the North is considered by many to be the first filmed documentary. You have bones with this. Yeah. The filmmaker Robert Flaherty is often criticized for staging certain sequences. That's the bone. Thereby unrealistically portraying the lives of his subjects and distorting his verite vision. We can try and figure out what those scenes are when we watch the movie. For this maiden voyage of Welcome to the Basement, we are going back to the very dawn of cinema. What do you think we'll find? Probably some a little bit of racism. And I'm guessing real animal death, which I'm not <laughs> looking forward Definite. to. Definitely. Nanook of the North is the story of Nanook and his family as they live in the cold, cold Arctic wasteland. Nanook of the North begins with the entire family getting out of a boat. They're at some sort of settlement farther down Hudson Bay. What the hell? Is that a person? A- there was a person? Another person in there? That oh, he was sitting like on? Like a clown kayak. Why would they do that? And, and there was, was a baby in there too? <laughs> oh, come on now. Robert Flaherty did fake. This is a <laughs> fake scene. This is fake. That's why they keep cutting it away. Yeah, exactly. But this is a great way of introducing characters, I do have to say. Everything about this movie is cold. It's too cold. Back in the kayak, everyone. (laughs) The children gorge themselves on lard. Yep, those kids are eating lard. And happy. Kids love lard. Oh, no. He ate too much lard. That's what happens. Now he'll be put out on the ice floe and left there. People don't wear gloves. They use their saliva to make their tools icy. Now that is badass. That is a badass thing. It's a frigid, cold, icy, freezing movie. Hey, I got your igloo right here, swinging. Hey, right here. And Nook and his family just seem to wander around. I'm not sure what they're trying to accomplish, but they kill lots of animals, and you get to see it in gory detail. He's catching a fish. With with pinchers. We have our first kill. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) The Nook. Did John Williams do the score for this, or what? <laughs> bite it. Bite it. Get it. Get it. Bite it. Bite it. Bite, bite it. it. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> the count is two fish. <laughs> and then a walrus is discovered, and they go to town on it, which is surprisingly awful. I've never seen someone kill a walrus. And he's going to kill it with his teeth. Oh, oh no. Where oh. are they? Oh, See, now, if you're on the other side of the oh, walrus, you run, would not be run. helpless. Oh. Oh, they got one. These guys make Ted Nugent look like a pussy. Uck, uck. Uck, uck, uck. I'll make the sound effects for this. Uck. I think it's more like, uck, uck. No, it's uck, uck. It said it right there. Uck, uck. They got Sal. We'll avenge you, Sal. Uck. Sal the walrus. Sal the walrus. Hmm. Chopping off a head. You don't see head chopping offs in uh, documentaries anymore. They build an igloo that would make the finest architect in the world proud in the span of an hour. Then breasts. Whoa. (laughs) Hey, oh. Nyla. (laughs) There's a film crew here. Now I'm the smiling one. (laughs) 
They're licking knives and chewing boots. In the I Arctic. need a wife to chew my boots in the morning. I work all day. I deserve a woman to chew my boots. And then there's a seal in a little hole, and somehow Nanook kills the seal with the help of his family. Ice to meet you. Sorry about the frosty reception. We'll see you later. This is some serious seal butchering going on right in front of our very eyes. It's kiss on the rose in the eyes. You're never going to survive unless you get a little dead. <laughs> so here they are in an abandoned igloo. Puppies get their own little alcove. Oh, what's happening here? Swallowing the men. <laughs> it's like the cask of a Montalato. <laughs> Montresor! But Montresor! It's just a joke! The thousand injuries of Puppy Nato. <laughs> As Nanook and his family bed down for the night, they know that there will be more knives to lick and more boots to chew in the following day. Tia Mock. Well, I finally watched Nanook of the North. I've been meaning to watch that movie forever. I have actually gotten past the point of even thinking I was ever going to see it. We were talking about how Flaherty sort of uh, altered things. The name of the lead character is not Nanook. His real name was Alakariyalak. Alakariyalak. Nanook is a little bit easier to yeah. say. His wife in the film? Mm hmm. Nyla. Not actually his wife. That leads me to wonder Robert Flaherty fabricated certain things in this. So some of it was necessary. He had to take out the wall of the igloo to, for the camera to fit in. Some of it, you know, weird giving Nanook a fake wife and a fake name. But, you know, the intent of the film was to show what Eskimo life is like. Did he do that? And if so, what does truth really mean? Even if they staged everything, you, you know there's no special effects in it. You know that when they're taking a dog sled over a, a mound of, of ice chunks, that you know that there, there's they're a bunch of dogs it. and a bunch of people on the sled. It doesn't matter if there was a supermarket behind the camera. He still lives that life. I mean, he yeah. was actually th that guy. And he's the guy who's building the igloo, and you're watching him do it, like, step by step. Right. They did that. It's they like, built that. What constitutes taking reality and turning it into falsehood? Yeah, and... I'm not sure Nanook is a case of that. I think Errol Morris was always, you know, has always been accused of, and he's probably the best... Uh, major documentarian out there. Mm -hmm. Michael Moore, the most successful one, is, is accused of that. What we're doing now. Right. Yeah. So I could edit you to look like a fool. So, uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, when, when, so, <clears throat> you know, it's, uh, if I, if I may turn the, 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 the topic here, uh, that, that's, he, he was, there, there was, <laughs> see? The Nook, of the North is something that if you watch comedies all the way up until the 60s, it was still a cultural reference 40 or 50 years after the point. It's a cultural landmark. These images that no one had ever seen before. The technology had caught up to the, the having the ability to bring this to a mass audience. You know, I'm sure it really made an impact on yeah. everyone's consciousness for, for decades to come. And like with a lot of silent films, it's not something that was only watched in Canada or only right. watched in America or England. It could be watched anywhere. This was still the time when people were watching like, <laughs> Man Does a Somersault. You know, I yeah. mean, that, they were still watching those movies. Have you seen Man Does a Somersault? It's no. a great, great movie. I'm not going to waste my time on that shit. It's, it's only like 24 seconds long. No. Nope. The body count of the movie... We have two fish that we get to see die. We get one walrus. We have two seals. Also an implied dead fox, which they capture, but you know he doesn't make it. And we also get one dog fight. This gives us a total of two, four, six, six dead animals. I know you and I were, were sort of cringing at these scenes. Oh, you were cringing more. Especially me. Well, I just saw War Horse. So oh. you know, is it hypocritical for us? I know that you are not a vegetarian. I'm not a vegetarian to shy away from scenes like this where this sort of thing happens every day oh, yeah. to bring us the food that we eat. You know, it's admirable to see people hunting for the food, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, whether it's the guy down the street who goes out every November to kill a deer, sure. or whether it's some guy who lives up in the Arctic Circle who can somehow kill a walrus. I'm not cringing at the morality of it. It's just the image itself. And I'm just 
wondering if you know we as as omnivores should be more a little more inured to something like that. I think it would be more brutal to watch how the food we eat is yeah. is killed. You yeah. know, because every time he goes out to hunt a, a walrus, it's pretty even. You know, that's that's a you know the walrus could have and easily the, pulled him out in the water. Too. And the animal has a chance to escape. Mm-hmm. You know, there is you that. Put a cow in a slaughterhouse and it's not getting out. <clears throat> this movie will teach you a lot of stuff of how to get by in case the big glacier comes or something along those lines. How to catch a fox? This movie doesn't teach us how to catch a fox because all the nook did was wander up to a foxhole, he climbed in it, and then he came out with a fox. There's really no technique there. But it's more than you can do. Look Everything is more than I can do. Everything the nook can do is no, more than no, any every, of us. Anything that anyone can do is more than I can do. Well, that's, that's a very humble way of looking at things. <laughs> I have a <clears throat> realistic assessment of myself. I enjoyed this movie. You know, it's certainly not, uh, uh, it's, I enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed this movie. The end. <laughs> Tia Mock, I hope you, uh, checked out our Facebook fan page and knew the movie ahead of time and watched it, uh, before watching this episode, um, because we really, uh, would like people to, to do that and kind of follow along with our experience. Rent some movies from your local video store. Uh, video stores are in big trouble right now, and you should go out and support them because it's a, it's a good thing to have in a community. You can actually have a personal relationship with a video store, quick. Or an intimate relationship. If you're lucky. Wow!